and I'm a paid spokesperson of, of uh, FTX. So I've, I've been dealing with their um, management. I've spoken to Sam last week on Thursday. Uh, I also have corporate accounts in FTX. Um, I'm also a shareholder of FTX International and FTX US. There's celebrity CEOs in this space as well, celebrity right. crypto uh, uh, entrepreneurs. And so the public can can fall prey to their uh, promotions, their marketing, and the like. And it's really important. Kevin O'Leary is one of the big names backing the now bankrupt FTX. He had always boasted that the platform had integrity and was unlike any other exchange. This was especially apparent when Kevin claimed investors in Terra Luna had not done their due diligence. Yet, he's not only a victim of the FTX collapse, but a partner of the company. Now, before you proceed, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We promise to bring you only the best of analysis and updates. Now, let's listen to the interview. On Wednesday of last week, the whole world knew that there was a liquidity issue at FTX and that the hole on the balance sheet was somewhere between six and eight billion dollars. Now, uh, I, I work in the indexing market for sovereign wealth and pension, and so we were getting a lot of inbound uh, requests about information about the situation because that's the kind of money that an institution or a sovereign wealth fund can put to work if they thought there was an interesting opportunity. And in financial services, illiquidity events or liquidity events like this can be interesting investment opportunities if you think it's a legitimate investment and it's not going to issues with the regulator. So the timeline uh, of that conversation is I put a message into FTX. Um, I, I wanted to confirm the amount being requested. Was it going to be six or eight? Uh, Sam called me back. Very, uh, you know, standard conversation. He was, uh, you know, rational. And uh, we had that conversation about confirming what the amount was going to be. Um, the amount was eight billion. That's what they were looking for. So um, I went back to these various entities that were asking me about it. And by that time, the SEC chair was on the air around the world. I think the network was CNBC. And he made it clear uh, that they were going to uh, come down hard on this situation. So the minute that occurred, that was the end of any sovereign wealth funds interest because they index in the S&P 500. They have to be compliant with the SEC. And so, you know, if you're if you're a sovereign wealth fund making a quarter of a billion dollars a day, you're, the only market you can put it into um, to park it is the is the S&P. It's liquid enough to absorb that. So they don't make moves against U.S. regulators. On Thursday, November 10th, the Securities and Exchange Commission's, or SEC, chair Gary Gensler was on CNCB to address issues of regulations in the crypto industry. He had talked tough on the issues bedeviling the sector and was particular about investigating the FTX matter. He hinted that the investigation was underway, even though he could not at that time reveal the details. Coincidentally, this interview on CNCB had a far-reaching effect on the path FTX took from that moment forward, because some investors had almost provided the $8 billion sum that Sam Bankman-Fried, the CEO of the embattled exchange, was looking for. Kevin reveals that he had called Sam that same day to ascertain the exact amount that he needed to save the business, and Sam had revealed that FTX needed between $6 billion and $8 billion. Kevin O'Leary also revealed that he had contacts who were interested in providing the funds immediately. Fortunately, the CNBC broadcast of the SEC chair Gary Gensler was the straw that broke the camel's back. Upon realising that the SEC was looking into the matter, the investors were dissuaded from proceeding with the bailout as this would bring them to loggerheads with the authorities. But get this, there's actually a twist to this story. Now, there are speculations that even the SEC chair Gary Gensler was working with Sam Bankman-Fried. This speculation takes root in the fact that Sam's parents are both top-level compliance officers that work with the government. The fact that Sam also donates a lot of money to the Democratic Party doesn't ease these suspicions either. The Republican representative, Tom Emma, tweeted that he's received reports that Gary Gensler was helping Bankman Fried work on legal loopholes to obtain a regulatory monopoly. This story is still developing, and we're yet to get the details to confirm or refute these claims, but we know that they're not mere rumours, as it's being handled even from those in government. Let's get back to Mr. Kevin. If you think about Binance and FTX, that's about 82% of the world's exchange. I mean, that's it. 
And that's a big, big chunk. So there was interest. And here's the real debate that went on. It really wasn't eight billion required because if you could put in, let's say, two or three billion, then open the gates and let anybody that wanted to get out get out. The minute you open a gate, some large percentage doesn't use the gate because they feel they're safe and now can transact again and they've got backing. That was the debate going on in the later hours of Thursday of last week. My guesstimate, and it's only a guesstimate, is the number that could have cleared FTX and kept it solvent would be about three and a half, four billion dollars, which is not a heavy price to pay for what had been built up over those years. However, once you go into a situation where regulators are coming in um, and the whole thing goes south, there's nothing you can do about that. My shares in uh, FTX US, well, we're going to have to write those down to zero, most likely. Mr. O'Leary says that FTX was worth saving because it was a major player in the industry. But how big was FTX? The exchange in the first quarter of this year reached its top valuation of $32 billion after a round of fundraising which eventually saw the company raise billions of dollars after the initial 400 million third series funding. FTX also had a million users transacting their crypto assets through the exchange. Sam, who was worth about $13 billion before the crash of FTX, is practically bankrupt after filing for bankruptcy of all his FTX, Almeida, and subsidiaries. He's not falling alone, though. Along for the ride is Kevin O'Leary, aka Mr. Wonderful, and a host of other celebrities. Even though we don't know how much investment Kevin made, it's believed he played a major role in bringing other big investors into FTX. And so going forward, is you have to ask yourself, what institution is going to put significant capital, because I've had this conversation early this morning, into any unregulated exchange. I don't, you don't even have to name names. They're just not going to do it anymore. And in fact, what we're doing in our operating company is we're taking, because fortunately we have other uh, positions that are not, that we're not in at FTX. Here's what we're doing. Just, I'm just one investor, but I'll tell you. We're taking our positions and we're moving them to Canada. We're putting them in to Wonderfy and BitBuy. Why? Because it is the world's first, <clears throat> excuse me, it is the world's first regulated license issued to a broker dealer exchange, all tied in one, under the order from the OSC. There is no optionality for commingling accounts. That doesn't happen in Canada. And in a really strange way, what I'm saying here is it's incredible that I have to go to another country outside of the US to finally find a place where I can put significant institutional assets that's regulated. Our regulation has fallen so far behind that I no longer feel comfortable putting significant amounts into anything that is not regulated under the OSC order. So Mr. Kevin maintains that the problem is a lack of regulation in the United States and reveals that he's moved his crypto investments to Canada where exchanges such as Wonderfy are regulated. Wonderfy has recently released a proof of reserves to reassure users of their integrity after the collapse of FTX. So now all that's left is to wait to see the actions that the SEC would take. But until that point, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and be sure to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.